acute brachial neuritis. It's a very important topic for the clinical practice and also for the exam. It's also called neurologic amyotrophy and personage Turner syndrome. You got to know the three names because sometimes the question is what is the diagnosis and they give you one of the three and you have to know that all the three are almost the same. So this acute brachial neuritis, it is a condition of severe shoulder pain, usually radiates down the arm and up to the neck and the scapula. Look at that illustration, it will show you the pain and where the pain goes to. The pain is sudden, severe, and can last for a few weeks. It can wake people up from sleep. It usually happens by itself, usually no history of trauma. It can occur more in males and it can affect any age. The position of comfort is the shoulder adducted and the elbow is flexed. And it is called the adduction flexion sign of acute break in neuritis. Neck movement and Valsava maneuver do not increase the pain. The pain will be increased by moving the arm. Although the pain is severe and sudden and lasts up to a few weeks, the condition is usually underdiagnosed or not diagnosed at all, or there is a delay in the diagnosis. Weakness may be absent in the acute phase. But as the pain resolves, weakness of certain muscles remain. The degree of weakness correlates with the severity of the initial pain. The muscles that are commonly involved are supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Definitely, you will get the external rotators with the suprascapular nerve is the most commonly involved, followed by the deltoid, which is the abductor of the shoulder, innervated by the axillary nerve. The condition may occur bilaterally. It may occur subclinically, only seen in EMG testing. The weakness may continue for a long period of time. Sensory changes is variable. If you have no sensory loss, that will be a good classic finding that confirm the diagnosis. In a lot of cases, there is decreased sensation that occurs in the lateral antebrachial cutaneous nerve. So the motor changes predominate over the sensory changes. It can involve the brachial flexus from C5 to T1 with variable degree of weakness. It can affect more than one nerve branch with certain patterns of involvement. You can see some of these patterns in the MRI. It is a benign self-limiting problem. 90% of the patient return to near normal in about three years. Only one third recover at one year. So what is the etiology? The etiology is unknown. It may be viral or shoulder trauma or overuse. It may be an autoimmune disease, surgical procedure, maybe stress, maybe immunization. There is a genetic form, which is rare. It's autosomal dominant. How about the imaging? Well, you will have hyper-intense muscles involved in the sagittal plane. The pattern of the affected muscles, usually supraspinatus and infraspinatus, followed by supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and deltoid. Later on, when the case is advanced, you see on the MRI, these muscles either atrophied or had fatty infiltration. How about EMG? And nervous studies. It is helpful for the diagnosis and the prognosis. In the first 
four weeks, you'll find acute denervation in the roots and the peripheral nerves. Like you find sharp waves, you find fibrillations. EMG may be abnormal for up to seven years after the diagnosis. Before we go to the treatment, we need to roll out other conditions, such as radiculopathy due to herniated disc. You can exclude that from C-spine imaging, an MRI of the C-spine. Another important differential diagnosis is adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. Another one, Lyme's disease. There are two particular conditions that are very interesting with acute break and neuritis. The first, the bilateral interosseous nerve palsy, which is caused by viral break and neuritis. That is published. So it may be associated condition. I think the anterior interosseous nerve palsy is one. The other one is winging of the scapula. So with the anterior interosseous nerve palsy, you will have inability to do the OK sign. Usually the motor loss follows intense shoulder pain. That's why a lot of people think it's a viral syndrome. This syndrome usually resolves with time, especially if that lesion occurred due to neuritis. The acute break in neuritis also may cause winging of the scapula. If you have a case of winging of the scapula, the serratus anterior involvement may cause dull ache pain. But if you have winging of the scapula and the patient has acute, severe, sudden pain, think of acute break in neuritis that involve the C7 nerve root that give branch to the long thoracic nerve. That long thoracic nerve will give the serratus anterior and when it doesn't function properly, then you will get winging of the scapula. It means severe shoulder pain plus winging rule out break and neuritis. Finally, what is the treatment? Arrest and observation. And maybe some steroids will help and try to avoid slang because it will cause flexion and internal rotation contraction of the shoulder and will cause also stiff elbow. Usually you will expect recovery for these patients.